If you know anything about black British history, you will know that generally speaking, black people have tended to vote for the Labour Party going back many, many decades. When black and Asian workers first started coming here in the post-World War II era, they were coming mainly in blue collar, blue collar jobs, working in transport, working in nursing, working in manual labour roles, if you like. And that then means that you're coming in and you're basically joining the working class in this country. They joined unions and that meant they generally voted for the Labour Party. You should know that in the 1940s, 50s, even the 60s and coming into the 70s, the Labour Party was much further to the left than it has been since the late 1990s. This speaks to me that back in those days, these black and Asian immigrants were generally speaking toward the left because they were more likely to be working class and more likely to identify themselves with working class politics. But is this still the case here in 2024? Now, the first thing that I want to look at is the constituencies in the UK, which have a significant black population. Out of the 63 such constituencies in the UK with a population that is 10% black or higher, all but four of them elected a Labour Party MP, two elected in a Conservative and two elected in an Independent. Going a little bit further, there was a poll done by the polling company called YouGov just on the brink of the election in, I think it was June 2024. And it asked a thousand people, so it's a quite a small poll, so you know, we, we can't necessarily read too much into this, but when we piece all of these different data sets together, we can kind of get a flavor of, 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 of things. And it asked a thousand people from, from ethnic minority background, so black, Asian, who, would they, who they would be voting along with an, a few other key questions. And you can see on the, on the results here that when you look at the black demographic, when you look at the, the black respondents, 72% of them said they were going to vote for the Labour Party versus 11% Conservative, 5% Greens, 2% Liberal Democrat, 7% Reform UK, which is fairly interesting to me at least, and 1% SNP and 2% other. These compare with a majority of Pakistani and Bangladeshi re respondents, yes, said that they would vote Labour, but that was 44% versus 7% for the Conservatives and 29% said, said saying they were going to vote for the Greens. Amongst the Indians, you see that 40% of them said that they would vote Labour, so still a majority, but 32% said that they would vote Conservative, so nearly even and then another 12% Green, another 5% Liberal Democrats. The same poll also asked what were the most important issues that they were thinking about when they were going to be going to vote in the general election. And this is, this is pretty interesting as well. All of them ranked highest issues to do with the economy, cost of living and the NHS. You know, so pretty standard in those regards. However, there are a couple of real big outliers. First of all, notice there that whereas 11% and 15% of the Indian and then Pakistani and Bangladeshi respondents said that housing was a key issue for them. That goes right the way up to 25% of black respondents. And if I was to hazard a guess as to why that is, I would point to previous data that I have looked at in my videos showing that black people here in the UK are far less likely than pretty much all other ethnic groups to be homeowners. And thus, they are much more likely to be either depending on social housing provided by the government, by councils, or privately renting. And if you're in that kind of situation, privately renting or, or trying to get the scraps of the little amount of social housing that, that, that exists, then of course, you're going to be worrying and concerned about housing. How am I going to be able to afford to keep a roof over my head? I've talked at length about the importance of housing and home ownership in a previous video. You can check those videos out at any time you wish. Whereas 13% and 11% of black and Pakistani and Bangladeshi respondents said that taxation was a key issue for them, that rises up to one in four or 24% of Indian voters. Why do I think that is? I think that is because when you look at Indians overall, on average, not every single last one, but on average, they are higher earning, they have higher levels of wealth, and I think that what happens when, when you start to earn more, when you start to build assets and build wealth, you start to become a lot more cognizant, aware of tax, how much of the money that you're earning is, is being taxed away. And that being the case, you um, unfortunately, you start to kind of get a little bit selfish. I think, well, I don't want my money being taxed. I don't want my earnings. I don't want my wealth being taxed. And so I would say that's probably why Indians have said that taxation is an issue for them at a much higher rate than did black or Pakistani and, and, Bang and Bangladeshi respondents. And then another big discrepancy there is the situation in Israel. Pakistani and Bangladeshi respondents 
41% of them said that was a key issue for them in this general election. That was the third most important issue for Pakistanis and Bang Bangladeshis as compared to 3% of black respondents, 16% of Indi Indian respondents and 13% of mixed and 22% of other, other respondents. So what that shows is fairly obvious to understand why that is. The Gaza situation is an issue that affects the, is the, the Islamic world. Pakistanis and Bangladeshis are overwhelmingly Muslim. And so they're going to be very, very, very concerned about the situation in Gaza, much more so than some of these other groups, particularly the black ethnic group. Most of them will be Christians, that Somalis are Muslims, but most other black people in the UK here, whether they be Caribbean or West African, Nigerian, Ghanaian and so forth, even Uganda, Zimbabwe, they're all Christians and are thus not as concerned about the Gaza situation. Now that doesn't mean that this is right of course because everyone should be concerned about situations where people's lives are being taken and flagrant abuses of international law and all that is taking place but the reality is that this is what people have said are the most important things for them and it's only the Pakistanis and Bangladeshis who have put it at such a high level of importance. During the 2024 general election, it has been recognised that although the Labour Party won a pretty convincing majority in the Houses of Parliament, they didn't win as big a majority as they thought they were going to win and as most pollsters thought they were going to win. And the main reason for that is probably because Muslim voters turned away from the Labour Party in very large numbers because of their stance on the issue, the Palestine-Israel situation. The Labour Party under Keir Starmer were essentially supporting the Israeli state in their actions and there was one point I believe where Keir Starmer was was asked whether it's perfectly okay for the Israelis to be cutting off water supplies or something like that to the Palestinians and Keir Starmer responded by saying well yes it is and those kind of things and their stance on the on the Palestine the, the conflict in the Palestine led to a real backlash from Muslims so you saw for example that some independent members of parliament took Labour Party seats in areas where there was a significant Muslim population and similarly in a lot of the strong hold areas for the Labour Party in places like East London, Bethnal Green, those kind of places which have very high percentages of Bangladeshi and Pakistani residents. Although the Labour Party still won most of those areas, the size of their majority was much, much, much smaller because a lot of these Bangladeshis and Pakistanis and Muslims of other ethnicities simply said, no, Labour, we're, we're not supporting you because of the way you are approaching this situation in Palestine. And the last thing I want to touch on with regard to this dynamic, with regard to the Muslim vote in the UK, is that that shows us the potential power of an organised voting community, an organised voting demographic. They got themselves together, these Muslims, and they organised independent candidates, they canvassed, they, they, you know, they went and did what they had to do to make their voice heard. And they absolutely made their voice heard by damaging the Labour Party vote to the extent that they did. There was a time in this country where the black vote was a pretty cohesive vote and the government and, and the parties did a lot to, to speak to the black community here in the UK because they understood that an organised black vote could make a significant difference, particularly in certain marginal areas. But unfortunately, we've got to, a, I think we've got to a point, we've really regressed from that. Because now we have a lot more people coming in here who do not see themselves as black. Of course, how can we be organised if... We want to deal with some of the structural issues that we see in education, in employment, in law and order, in criminality, or whatever whatever it might be. If we want to get any kind of political influence, on the, particularly on the national scale, we're going to need to learn to put aside our differences, pragmatically come together and organise ourselves around certain key topics and key issues. Yes, as I've said before, person from Somalia is not exactly the same as person from Jamaica, of course. But person from Somalia and person from Jamaica are racialized in the same way by the system. And it makes sense that we come, can, can be able to put aside our differences and come together and work towards those common goals on a pragmatic level. But anyway, hope that's been of interest to you. The answer to the video title, how did black British people vote in the general election of 2024, is that most of them voted Labour. Simple as that. Thank you for watching. Take care. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do subscribe and like the video as well. And then check out these videos here, which YouTube should suggest here on this side. That video there should be a suggestion from YouTube. And then this video here is a suggestion from my good self on, on, a, on a video that might follow on nicely from this one. All right, take care of yourself. Peace out and I'll see you next time. Salama.